Let's start our new journey in chapter 8. So chapter 8 got two parts, which is 8.1 and 8.2. 8.1 is rather simple. It is based on multiple of energy resources and uh, which you probably have learned in RGCSE and now we are trying to make it quantitative so the things are here are quite simple while 8.2 is something that is more like completely new to you which include the idea of um, how to calculate radiation and also the idea of global warming in a more again more quantitative way Without further ado, I want you to read the first two page of your task book. So this page and also this page. Pause the video and we'll come back to talk about some key points. A few moments later. Okay, so let's go through some key points. Um, there are two terms called the primary and secondary energy. And I think it's quite self-explanatory here. Primary energy is something that happened in nature, like the fossil fuel, etc. Uh, even the wind uh, which carry the kinetic energy of the air those are primary energy and for secondary energy is still something that uh, later on you store them like the electricity uh, you store for maybe driving an electrical car etc um, however I don't feel uh, these two ideas is regularly as in IB so I yeah I think it's good to know but I don't think you need to deep dig too deep into it uh, something more important, much more important is uh, here. So there are two words called, one is called specific energy, one is called energy density. And the most important thing that you need to remember is their unit. So think about uh, what their units are. For specific energy and for energy density, you have to look at its name. The word specific, where have you seen it before? In chapter 3 uh, about thermal physics, you should have learned about a terminology called specific heat capacity. And if you recall what that is and the unit of specific heat capacity, you should recall that the unit is joule per kg per Kelvin or degree Celsius. And uh, well, you, you may also represent it in the formula of Q equals to mc delta t. So that C is the specific heat capacity and you may also represent it in another equation that is uh, related to heat capacity only so if you recall what is heat capacity it is basically the mass multiplied with the specific heat capacity so the main idea of whether it is specific or not if you try to see the pattern then you should see uh, it is more about per kg okay so that's why the idea in specific energy here is simply joule per kg also so how much energy per unit mass that it carry for a certain material for the other one energy density uh, is considering something very similar but then instead of using the idea of kg think about what you learn about density so for density talk about like usual material density then we, we will have an equation called uh, density equal to mass over volume and you should notice that it is per volume okay per unit volume so how much mass you have per unit volume and so here is the same idea where you should have the unit for energy density to be joule per unit volume so in our SI unit don't write V but you should write meter cube in this case okay so uh, basically these two things is uh, more or less more measuring uh, the yeah you may say density of the uh, energy in a certain material but they use a different ways to measure uh, one is using kg one is using the size which is the volume which is meter cube uh, this is the same as you say something is big uh, you can also talk about its volume and uh, you can also talk about its mass usually so that's why we want to um, distinguish these two uh, unfortunately you may find in some past paper in probably uh, older past paper like be maybe probably before 2016 I think uh, sometimes they mix it up which is quite quite terrible in IB like I, I don't know why they mix it up 
in in that case, what I mean is uh, they sometimes will call specific energy with the unit of this, which, yeah, I mean they just mix up the two concept in the in the question. So, um, if you see if you're trying to do those practice, um, try to be flexible. I would say. Um, but then in the current syllabus, it should be quite clear, all right, and you should not uh, mix them up. Okay, so here is the exact question I was talking about for you as an example. This is from past paper. I would like you to try it, pause the video, and we'll talk about it. Okay, so let's take a look here. It says the efficiency is 20%. This is useful power output apparently. And it said the most important thing I want to show you is it said energy density is somewhat megajoule per kg. And if you remember when we said energy density, it should be joule per density of per volume, right? So it should be meter cube instead. So like I said, uh, sometimes I really don't know why they just mix it up. Uh, so try to go along with the flow and uh, it should be okay I mean in the past but again uh, for the most updated past paper they won't be like that so don't worry about this so for the question itself they ask you the mass of fuel consumed every second so basically how many kg per second is consumed so I think the first thing you want to do is write down the equation for efficiency so if you remember efficiency was a uh, useful power output over the total power all right times 100% so this is the equation that you base on and you should have 20% equals to useful that is 1000 mega over the input so the input uh, should be with a unit of joule but this is a per kg so think about the answer you want to say let's say I call this um, X, how about that? So if you look at the units of this megajoule per kg and also kg per second, uh, you should be able to find out the units of power which is in watts if you multiply them. So let me show you on the side if you don't understand what I say. So the one that I got from megajoule per kg, kg negative one times, maybe I'll just write bracket. Uh, times kg per second then you would have these two kg negative one and this kg cancel out and so this will be joule per second and if you recall joule per second is simply the same as watts so what you can do is uh, we write this part as 50 mega times x x is the one that we want to find um, times 100 percent and so uh, just calculate the answer and you should find uh, this is 0 0.2 equals to m got cancel out m is mega uh, 1000 divided 50 is 20 so 20 divided x and that will be x equals to 20 divided 0 0.2 that give 100 simply so that should be 100 kg per second and that means the answer is d Right now, I would like you to try the example 8.1 in the question set. So pause the video now and we'll check the answer. Do it! Just do it! So the first part asks you to prove this equation. Uh, I don't find this very useful in IB, but I would just say um, proving equation is part of the fun in physics. So why not? Let's try to do that. So we have to better define the ED and ES properly first. So as we said, uh, ED was energy density, so that should be the energy defined by density as in per volume. So for ES, it will be energy per mass, right, M. And so in that case, I think it's quite obvious already where you can say uh, right hand side equals to the one that they wrote, rho, E S and uh, rho is density so which equals to mass over volume and E S actually is E over M and so in that case you can find the two M got cancelled out 
and leaving you with E over V and U over V is simply uh, ED equals to ED and that equals to the left hand side and then this is how you prove the equation for part B I'll just leave it to you you just have to find the energy density and specific energy in the table and then use the equation to calculate Apparently, you use the energy density divide the specific energy from the table so uh, in that case you can find the number here and uh, basically yeah it's like what the textbook shown here the last thing I want you to look at in this video is uh, look at the chart here they have given you different kind of feel uh, for a specific energy and energy density can you try to spend maybe 10 seconds 50 seconds on this and try to see if you can find any pattern so go now Okay, so the pattern that you should find now first of all is uh, you should find the uranium and in fact the hydrogen are so different from the other because uh, the other things like natural gas, gasoline, uh, kerosene, diesel and coal these are all the crude oil products where you probably have learned it in chemistry so they come from the same kind of material you may say and therefore uh, you can see they kind of behave quite similarly for specific energy and as for the energy density because it's involving the volume right and so you should be able to see for these two is it's especially lower and that is something to do with its state because these two are both gas simply uh, while for these these are all liquid and again uh, for uranium it is a very special kind of fuel which we'll talk about in chapter 7 also and maybe a little bit in this chapter because uh, this is something to do with the nuclear fission and this is very unconventional comparing to the other kind of uh, materials where you simply would just burn them uh, for uranium it is another different kind of uh, reaction that we are talking about and of course that leads to uh, the existence of nuclear weapons and also nuclear power plants and you can see it is very useful in terms of providing energy like very small amounts no matter in terms of mass or in terms of volume it can provide a lot of energy so that's why people could use it for weapon and that's why uh, it is quite kind of quite an important resource in the world uh, where most countries will want to have more and more and uh, that would be very important for their own maybe national security or simply uh, economically to provide energy okay so for other things below uh, it's just mainly uh, talking about non-renewable energy and renewable energy and uh, the idea should be quite easy and you have learned in IGCSE so I'm, I don't want to spend too much time so basically idea is uh, non-renewable they are finite sources as in uh, within your lifespan like for normal human probably it's like 80 years uh, it, once you use it it cannot be reproduced uh, or you can more precisely say uh, the rate that it is going to be consumed is not as fast as the rate that it is going to be reproduced um, for renewable energy as in like wind power solar power basically it takes billions of years to use them up so uh, we we kind of treat them as renewable energy in this case as for the chart below I um, I think this is not so important as in the figure uh, as in this is very old data so if you could uh, go to Google and you should be able to find more. In fact, I do believe uh, nuclear and actually solar energy has been growing a lot more uh, and also hydroelectric as well. Uh, and in terms of the carbon dioxide, of course, you should see here there's nothing because uh, these things will not emit CO2 simply. So I just Google and try to find a picture that also the source is reliable and also quite up to date it is from 2019 and you can see um, the hydroelectric really grow more and also nuclear also grow more as well because uh, 
uh, simply the crude oil are limited resources and also uh, people are trying to pay more attention into renewable energy to provide a better planet for our next generation to reduce the amounts of CO2 emission uh, to reduce the effects of global warming as well.